Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another beautiful day, a day in which God is created with all of his mercies fresh and new for us on this lovely morning where we come together and worship as an online community at this time, but still coming together, united, strong, and collectively together wanting to show our love for God. And I'm glad that you could join us here this morning in doing that. We've had good news this week. It seems as though finally we are seeing the fruit that's been born out of these stage four restrictions that uh, many of us are enduring at this time here in the state of Victoria. The numbers are coming down. And this morning, it was interesting to hear from a health specialist on ABC Breakfast, who, when asked the question of whether or not we should be confident uh, moving ahead, that things are going the right way, the health professional expressed that we should um, have what she termed a cautious optimism for how things are tracking. <clears throat> I thought that was interesting, an interesting uh, turn of phrase to say that we should have a cautious optimism. Uh, it, for me, it was a bit like this, that we our numbers have been coming down and I've been really celebrating that and every day seeing the numbers go from in the 40s to 30s and 20s and really feeling like, yes, we're, we're finally getting somewhere. And then uh, the cautious optimism, of course, kicks in and it's, well, let's be cautiously optimistic. And I understand why there is that sentiment around, because we know what happened last time when the first wave of coronavirus came and affected our community and what then happened after that. So I think she's right. Cautious optimism probably is the uh, right approach and way that we should move forwards. And we're going to talk a little bit, actually, it speaks into uh, the theme of what we're going to look at today in what is the final week in journeying with Nehemiah. We're going to be finished with Nehemiah after today. He's spoken to us and he's uh really challenges in this time i believe but he's got one final twist that he's going to leave with us today in nehemiah's story but we'll get to that a little later no spoilers we'll get to that when the time is right it's good to see a number of you here this morning but before i acknowledge some of you I do want to acknowledge the fact that there are a couple of people today who are celebrating birthdays in our Sunshine Salvos community. So I want to say a happy birthday to you, Tracy. Happy birthday. I hope that the boys look after you and spoil you today. And also a happy birthday to Jennifer. Likewise, I say I hope that the boys in your home treat you well and spoil you today also. Good morning, Arne and Michelle. It's great to see you here this morning. Good morning to family gathered and watching over in Box Hill and also family in Coburg. Good to see you here this morning. Good morning to Hillary and Kevin there in Melton. Great to have you here with us this morning. Good to see you, Delwyn. Great to have you joining us this morning. Also good to see family from Muralbark. Thank you for joining us. To Alison and Ian, good morning to you. And I'm pretty sure your mum might be there too, Alison, or she could be. So a good morning to you all this morning. Good morning to my auntie, Ethel, over in Box Hill, and Uncle Graham, good morning to you. Margaret Kelly, there in Burnside, good morning. Joy and the Andrews over in Melton. Good to see you this morning to Norm and Ngu. Lovely to have you join us this morning. And good morning to Sean. 
great to see you here this morning and to Margaret Dyer and Marcia as well. Uh, great to have you here with us this morning. Let me acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we gather today. For myself here, I pay my respects to the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, the traditional owners of this land where I, where I sit at this time. I pay my respects to their elders past and present and also honour and acknowledge all the aspirations and hopes of the next generation, the future of our First Nations people here in this great South land, this dreaming country of Australia. And I also, on behalf of the Salvation Army, recommit and acknowledge that we are working towards reconciliation and justice with our First Nations people. Yep, good morning to you, Stephen and Meg, out there in Melton. Good morning, Tao and Tan. And Ella and Lana, good to see you. Enjoyed watching a little video of you both yesterday, uh, paddling and losing your sandal in a creek somewhere. Wasn't quite Thailand, Tao, but it's as good as you'll get it this time. Great to see you here this morning as well. A call to worship to begin our time this morning in worship. This is a lovely little prayer entitled The Immense Longing. And it doesn't matter who we are, we all come, especially to God at the best of times with immense longings. This morning is no exception. And so I bring this prayer as the beginning of our worship this morning. Eternal God, we come. We come again, seeking, hoping, wanting to hear your word. We come because despite of our best efforts, we have failed to live by bread alone. We come impelled by a desire too deep for words, with longings that are too infinite to express. We come yearning for meaning in our existence and purpose for our life. We come acknowledging our need for each other's affirmation and encouragement, for each other's understanding and love. We come confessing, Lord, our dependence on you. Lord, embrace us with your forgiveness and claim us by the mystery and the depths of your love. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me also share together with you this morning the Lord's Prayer. As you can pray it with me where you are, simply saying it with me. As Jesus taught his followers to pray, we also pray this morning. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Great to see you here this morning, Narelle, representing the Clayton family who are never too far from our hearts, of course, here at Sunshine Salvos. And good to see you, Anne and Ernst, joining us from over there in Victor Harbour, South Australia. A lovely morning to you as well. This morning, I'm going to sing two worship songs that both really speak into our theme this morning. The first is Blessed Be Your Name. And then I'll be following that with the lovely meditative 
prayer song, Have Faith in God. Uh, particularly that second song, Have Faith in God, has real meaning and connection for me. I, I remember when that song first emerged, you know, written by that most wonderful of, of Christian songwriters, Jeff Bullock, um, emerging probably in the mid to late 80s. And it was a real um, song that touched many people at that time. And certainly from the formation of, of my teenage years, I remember that song being very powerful. And especially the refrain within the chorus of that song, it really encouraging us, compelling us not to give up, not to let go of the faith that God places in our hearts. So we're going to sing that this morning as well. But first, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name, land that is plentiful, where the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, on the road marked with suffering, for this pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away, you give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Oh, Lord 
Won't you lead me by the still waters, quietly restoring my soul? Speak words of wisdom, the promise of glory, the power and the presence of God. Have faith in God, let your hope rest on the faith He has placed in your heart. Never give up, never let go of the faith He has placed in your heart. O oh Lord, you guide me through all my darkness, turning my nights into day. And you'll never leave me, never forsake me, the power of the presence of God. Have faith in God, let your whole breast on the faith He has placed in your heart. Never give up, never let go of the faith He has placed in your heart. Have faith in God, let your hope rest on the faith He has placed in your heart. Never give up, never let go of the faith He has placed in your heart. Father, we pray that in this time when we have so many needs, so many hopes, so many desires for ourselves, our situations, our community. Lord, we pray that you would instill within us a spirit of not giving up, of not letting go of the hope and the faith that you have placed in our hearts. Lord, give us that strength to keep moving forwards. Give us that hope to keep our eyes on the goal and give us an extra shot of your love lord that we might overflow with love out of ourselves for others lord continue to bless us in these difficult times and continue lord to also be with a special group of people who i'm going to pray for right now lord i want to lift up before your throne kayleen who has been raised before Sunshine Salvos by Alison. We raise her before up to you in prayer, Lord, praying that you would continue to be with her as she recovers and is treated for the aneurysm in her brain that has struck her down. Lord, we pray that your healing touch would be upon her, that your comfort would be with the family that surround her, and that your wisdom and expertise would be with the hands of professionals that continue to treat Kayleen at this time. Lord, bless her. We also want to pray this morning for a dear friend of Diane's, Angela, who has received a diagnosis, a grim diagnosis of cancer, only been given another 14 months to enjoy life. Father, we lift up before you, Angela, at this time, Lord. We pray that amidst the hurt and the confusion and the fear that she must be feeling at this time, that you would comfort and give your peace to her, that you would give her a reassurance 
that you are with her, that whilst the road ahead may not be easy, but she won't be walking it alone. Lord, surround her with your love at this time and her family and also her treating professionals, Lord. Bless them all, we pray this morning. We also want to lift up in prayer this morning our dear friend Marcia, who continues to recuperate from very recent surgery to insert a pacemaker to get her heart starting and working properly again. Lord, we, we pray for Marcia this morning that you would continue to place your healing hand upon her, continue to surround her with love and care. I want to lift up and thank you, Lord, for the role that Margaret Dyer plays in Marcy's life as a, as a friend, as a carer, as a companion. Lord, bless Marcia and Margaret this morning, but particularly continue to be in Marcia's reco recovery be the healing God you are, Lord, and touch her. We also continue to pray for the young man, Jeremy, son of uh, a new friend of ours at Sunshine Salvos, Helen. Lord, we pray that your healing touch would be with him, that you would be comforting him, allowing him to enjoy what is left ahead of the road of life. Lord, we pray that you would surround him with your peace and with your love and also to do just that with Helen as well, a loving mum. Lord, bless her, give her every resource she needs at this time. Surround her and uh, fill her with love and compassion and care. Lord, bless them at this time. And finally, Lord, I want to lift up before your throne, Lisa, who lost her mum last week, just on Wednesday this week, farewelled her mum over in Wellington at a funeral. Lord, we pray that your spirit of comfort and peace would be with Lisa and all of her family at this time. Lord, bless them. Give them a sense of the wonderful memories that they have of their mum, but also the hope of eternity that she is now in a better place. Lord, we, we just pray your peace and comfort and love would surround Lisa at this time and also for Lusa, for Naraya and Noah who are here in Melbourne separated from Lisa. Lord, we pray that you would continue to be with them during this most difficult of times. Lord, bless them. There are so many cares and concerns that we have, Lord, in this time in our community. We have to place our hope in you, our trust, our faith in you. We know that Doing it alone only leads really to a dead end, that we really do need you. And so, Lord, we do acknowledge you this morning and worship you, knowing that we depend on you. Lord, we thank you for that. We praise you. We thank you for your grace and your love that sustains us in these days. Continue, Lord, to give us strength to keep going on and never giving up. Bless us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. A couple of announcements I've got this morning. <clears throat> On the 10th of October, so that's in, the, in around three weeks from now. Uh, there's going to be another online gathering for the blokes, Sunshine Salvos, an invitation for all men of Sunshine Salvos to come and join me online in Coles Cave uh, to have another chat, to touch base, and particularly to reflect upon the fact that the 10th of October is actually World Mental Health Day. And I think we're all, as, as we've certainly spoken about in recent weeks and months, all very aware at this time, particularly that our, our mental health is important. It's something that we need to be in tune with. And we have a chance to talk about that, men, because we don't talk about such things very well. And so the forum will be open for all blokes to come together from Sunshine Salvos to come online 
and talk about the things that are really important for us, the things we're doing well in and the things perhaps we're not. That's on the 10th of October, gentlemen. So I'll look forward to seeing you then and I will keep the reminders coming for you to join us on that Saturday evening around seven o'clock. This Thursday, also at seven o'clock, our online Bible study will be taking place. Uh, last week, Sean led the study and, and he led it directly out of the Sunshine Salvo's Facebook page. And I thought we will do that again. We'll, we'll open up the online small group study on the Sunshine Salvo's page and I'll have it open for anyone to join. Up to this point, we've been sending out invites to um, particular people who've regularly attended, but I thought I'll have a, an open invitation to come and to uh, join us this Thursday at seven o'clock. If you go into the Sunshine Salvo's Facebook page, you should see a link there that will open you up and, and allow you to come in and, and join us in that uh, online gathering. So that's this Thursday at 7 p.m. Of course, we keep an eye on, on the um, announcements every day that usually come sometime in the late morning from our Premier, Daniel Andrews, as to what the, the state of play is here in Victoria with our new cases of COVID-19 and, and, and also, unfortunately, the announcement of how many passings there have been. So we will continue to do that. But as I said at the opening of our time this morning, we are growing continually encouraged, yes, with cautious optimism that our numbers are heading in the right direction at last and that we are moving towards the possibility of restrictions being eased here in Victoria. And I know that that is something that we all dearly yearn for, look forward to and really place our hope in that, that we will see that roadmap, roadmap to recovery actually come into reality. So continue to pray for those in decision-making positions, the Premier, other health ministers and officials, uh, those who are influential and will be making the decisions about how we do potentially in the coming few weeks do come out of these stage four restrictions into lesser restrictions. All and everything of that, of course, with cautious optimism. Continue to pray for our leaders. Continue to pray for our seniors in aged care. You know, all the passings we hear of, all the deaths every day that get announced are predominantly from our aged care centres, nursing homes. So continue to pray for our seniors and all those healthcare professionals who work in them. They really do need our prayers at this time. That's all the announcements I have <clears throat> for this morning. I do want to share with you though, a really special story that happened, uh, not this past Friday, but the Friday before. You'll understand that Fung and I have been uh, very continuing to be busy in, in the service to our community of providing emergency food relief, be that in the form of hampers, whether they're picked up or whether they're delivered in and around the inner west of Melbourne, but also, of course, uh, the community meal that we've continued to run on a Friday evening as a takeaway service, um, giving out over 150 meals every Friday evening. Not this past Friday, but the Friday before, we, we had a young woman who we've seen a couple of times come to our door seeking again food assistance and she had a trolley with her. We weren't quite sure where she was from, that her English is not great at all and she would often use her Google Translate on her phone to assist with communication with us. And uh, she came again and, and we know why she was there. So I took her trolley from her and was getting ready to go out the back to fill it with some food. 
and she pulled her phone out and showed it to me. When when she was she was typing something on her phone, and I thought, oh, she's going to ask if we've got something or do we have this or this. And oftentimes we we find ourselves in a position of not having some of the things that people ask for, and and you'd be surprised what people ask for. Um, but she pulled her phone out and typed in something and showed it to me, and it and it said this on the phone in English. She'd obviously typed it in in Arabic and it translated to English. It said this, and I read it. Can I give a tithe here? And I read that and I was uh, really shocked, <laughs> really taken back, and then quickly touched and filled with a real um, emotion and, and a sense that again God had stopped me in my tracks in in the presum in the presumptions that I had to again uh, come into my reality in a lovely way. Of course, in answer to that question, I aff affirmatively said yes. Of course, you can offer your tithe here because Sunshine Salvos is a place of worship. I showed this lady our main hall that she could see that we were a place of worship, a church. And so she she knew that and she recognised that. And, and, and so, of course, then I, I asked, you're a Christian? And she showed me her wrist and she had a tattoo. It looked like it had been done in home. It wasn't a professional one. It was a, a homemade tattoo of a cross on her wrist. And she showed me that. And I wear a cross around my neck every day, all the time. And so I showed her that and we, we, we quickly all established that, yes, we're a church. Yes, we were both Christians. We were brother and sister in Christ. And I asked her, well, where have you come from? What's some of your story? And it turns out this lady is Egyptian. Uh, she's a Christian from the Coptic community of Christians in Egypt, and she had just been in Australia for only five months with her young family and her husband had come here as refugees uh, fleeing Egypt because they were persecuted within their community for their faith. And, um, and it was lovely just to share that moment of her story and then, of course, um, understanding that asylum seekers and refugees here in Australia initially upon arrival do it fairly hard. They don't have much support at all from the government in terms of finance. And she proceeded then to pull out $150. That was her tithe. And again, I was humbled and quite emotional. And, and, and I must admit, filled her trolley to its absolute brim with what I could that day. And, and we've maintained a lovely relationship um, since then. She came in again just a couple of days ago with her daughter. And, and that's a, just a, one of those lovely moments that happens in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of crisis, in the midst of all the busyness of trying to help and serve a community in need. Just a wonderful little snapshot of where God is at work and where God continues to remind us that um, even in the midst of all of that negative stuff, all the challenges, there are still wonderful rays of light that shine through. And so, Loris, our new friend, um, was really a blessing to us. And we really do hope that when restrictions lift and even when we can gather again into gathered worship, that Loris and her family will join us at Sunshine Salvos. Because after all, if she's going to pay a tithe to us at Sunshine Salvos, then she should at least enjoy our community and our worship and our company. I hope one day you'll get to meet her and certainly look forward to that. But I just wanted to share that lovely little story with you an encouraging story for us all. There is, of course, one other thing I did want to say this morning. 
and you'll have seen that I put the announcement on our Facebook page that uh, Fung and I will be remaining at Sunshine Salvos uh, for another year. Uh, the appointments for the Salvation Army, the, the general change appointments came out uh, just last week and we were informed that we will be staying on at Sunshine for another term that will take us into certainly to the end of 2021. And so that um, is a, a wonderful relief to Fung and I because we love our community, we love serving Sunshine and the greater city of Brimbank, but we certainly love leading our faith community at Sunshine Salvos. So I want to thank those who left lovely messages and encouragements for us uh, in regard to that news. And we certainly commit ourselves, as I indicated on our Facebook page, we commit ourselves again to discovering and making our connection with people and our community in Sunshine, making that happen in effective and productive ways, but also leading and loving our faith community, all of you here at Sunshine Salvos. Our scripture today, our final scripture from Nehemiah comes from the final chapter of Nehemiah, chap uh, chapter 13. Nehemiah 13, verses 1 to 12. Nehemiah 13, verses 1 to 12. On that same day, as the book of Moses was being read, the people found a statement which said that no Ammonite or Moabite should ever be permitted to enter the assembly of God, for they had not been friendly to the Israelites when they left Egypt. Instead, they hired Balaam to curse them, though our God turned the curse into a blessing. When this law was read, all those of mixed ancestry were immediately expelled from the assembly. Before this had happened, Eliashib, the priest who had been appointed as supervisor of the storerooms of the temple of our God, who had also been a relative of Tobiah, he had converted a large storage room and placed it at Tobiah's disposal. The room had previously been used for storing the grain offerings, frankincense, temple utensils and tithes of grain, offerings, new wine, olive oil, and the special portion set aside for the priests. Moses had decreed that these offerings belonged to the Levites and to the singers and to the gatekeepers. I was not in Jerusalem at that time, for I had returned to the king in the 32nd year of the reign of King Artaxerxes of Babylon, though I later received his permission to return. When I arrived back in Jerusalem and learnt the extent of this evil deed of Eliashib that he had provided to buy with a room in the courtyards of the temple of God, I became very upset and I threw all of Tobiah's belongings from the room then I demanded that the rooms be purified and I brought back the utensils for God's temple and the grain offerings and the frankincense. I also discovered that the Levites had not been given what was due to them. So they and the singers who were to conduct the worship services, they had all returned to work in their fields. I immediately confronted the leaders and demanded, why has the temple of God been neglected? Then I called all the Levites back and restored to them all of their proper duties. And once more, all the people of Judah began bringing their tithes of grain, new wine and olive oil to the temple storerooms. May God add wisdom to the reading of his word this morning.
Good morning, Joe. Good to see you. And that's a lovely story tale of a uh, Iranian Christian who was married to an Egyptian Christian. There, there are those lovely stories that really do uh, come and shine light on our lives. People are a blessing to us in, in amazing ways we could never imagine. And so I come back to the words of that health professional this morning on ABC Breakfast on the television who said that at this time of encouraging news of lowering numbers that instead of lifting the lid off our celebrations and, and wanting to get back into life as what it was normally that we should actually exercise what she termed a cautious optimism for the pathway ahead. Those words struck me this morning and they do connect with our message here this morning because I understand the reason why we would want to feel cautious optimism at this time. We only need to cast our minds back three or four months when the first wave of coronavirus had come through and, and, and we had what seemed to be a, a lessening of numbers and, and things began to lift. And I think the community at large and, and, and even our government leaders and, and people in positions of responsibility, probably if they were really honest, we would all say that we took our eye off the ball perhaps, that we went back thinking that this pandemic, this coronavirus, the, the height of it had passed and that we could return in some way to the kind of normal that we'd been used to eating in restaurants, having friends over. We were still restricted in some ways, but um, there seemed to be this real um, release within our community. Probably not much cautious optimism, probably more perhaps reckless abandon in wanting to go back to what life was. And then we know what the product of that was. We know where that led to and where it still has us now. Locked down in even tougher restrictions as we've endured this second wave of coronavirus in our community. So I understand why she says we should have cautious optimism, that we should be conservative in our approach and our attitudes to opening up again and returning back to what resembles perhaps some kind of normality, at least in small doses. I get it. Because when you turn away from the original intentions and the convictions of what is going on sometimes in life, and you turn away, avert your eyes, take your eye off the ball perhaps, then sometimes things can go back to the way they were, or perhaps be even worse. And that's really the story, the way that the narrative of Nehemiah finishes. Because within the story, as we've read it and journeyed with Nehemiah, we've seen all the positive, constructive things that he's done, the things that he set out to do originally, coming back to Jerusalem, making the solid commitment, putting together the firm plans in place to repair all the gates and the walls of Jerusalem. And he did that. Within around 50 days, he finished that job. And then he stayed on in Jerusalem as a governor there for 12 years. And normally when we think about Nehemiah and we hear the stories of Nehemiah, often the story finishes with the last nail as it's been driven into that final repair on that last gate or that last brick in the wall. But that's not the end of the story. Following all of that repair job, the temple was restored. Central worship in the temple was restored to what it should have been or what God's word indicated it should be. Ezra 
came into the story and he did a lot of reformation work in the religion of the temple and much of the text of Nehemiah after the repair of the walls and gates finishes is, is devoted to the celebrations and the restoration of religious ceremonies happening and focused on that central epicenter of Jewish faith, the temple of God. But then something happens that we don't often know about or have our attention drawn to, and that is that Nehemiah left Judah, left Jerusalem, and went back to Susa, back in Persia, where he was, where he was an official. Yes, he was Jewish. Jerusalem was his home. But he still went back to the king of Persia to serve him. That was the deal. If you remember at the very beginning of Nehemiah, when Nehemiah first asked that king, King Artaxerxes, can I please go back to Jerusalem? The permission was given, but the question was also asked, well, when will you return? Now, the king wouldn't have asked that if he didn't want Nehemiah to return. So you can be assured that Nehemiah knew that once his job was done in Jerusalem, that he would be expected to return back to Persia. And so he did. And what we have read today in the text, of course, is what happened after Nehemiah left was simply that things in Jerusalem, things around Judah, went haywire again. There was a second wave, if you like, of religious apathy. There was a second wave of laziness, a second wave of injustice and things happening, negligent things against the temple and against the faith of Israel. Obviously, at some point over in Persia, Nehemiah hears about this. And Nehemiah being Nehemiah, obviously gains permission again to stride back over to Israel, to Jerusalem, to sort things out, which he does, as the text tells us. I think the, the story and this ending of Nehemiah and, and where we finish with Nehemiah today and, and, and for this series, what it reminds us of is something that's quite relevant to us at this time. And that is if we take our eye off the ball, if we turn away and walk away from the things that we've committed to, then there's every possibility that those things can regress and go backwards, that things can go back to the way they were, just like even COVID-19. You know, in, in, in our life, I'm sure we can all relate to things at this time, and it's not always by choice, because we're under restrictions, but there are things in and around our life that were our normal that we've had to neglect. Some of you might have noticed that um, perhaps your gardens in the back have got, got a little ragged and overgrown. Perhaps, um, perhaps there are other things in your life that have uh, perhaps let go a little. Perhaps the calorie intake in your daily diet has gone a little haywire. We can all relate to that. There are things that our circumstances have brought us that we wouldn't have chosen or asked for, but things that have caused us to focus primarily on our home and some of the things of home and, and other things have, have been let go. Things that we have probably in our minds think we can come back to and address again later. We know that in life, when, when we do avert our glance from the necessary things in our life, if we turn away from them long enough, that those things potentially have every possibility to come back and bite us. We know that that's what happened with COVID-19 in our community, the second wave. We relaxed. We didn't continue to do the right things and we went backwards. Israel relaxed once Nehemiah was out the door. It reminds me of that saying that 
when the cat's away, the mice will play. And that was exactly what happened in Judah, that the, the worship and all the good progress that they had made in restoring the glory of the temple and uh, life, religious life, committed faith to Judaism, all of that good work that Nehemiah and Ezra installed just unraveled because Nehemiah wasn't there. He'd walking away. Well, he comes back and he sorts it out. And that's the end of the book of Nehemiah. What it says to me is that Nehemiah shows us throughout his life, through his character, that he has perseverance. We can see that. He doesn't give up. He doesn't let go. Yes, he went back to fulfill his commitments in Persia. But as soon as he knew that things had gone bad, he came straight back again and sorted things out. He was full of perseverance, that spirit of tenacity. He was committed, single-mindedly committed. And I've made the point throughout this series in Nehemiah that some of the things that Nehemiah was committed to as far as his views and thoughts on what Israel's faith in God and, and worship in the temple, what all of that meant and how that played out I, i'm not in agreement with a lot of those things even in the text as i read it today there was the commitment made by the people the jews of judah in the temple that they expelled anyone from being able to go into the temple to worship if they were of mixed ancestry i take that personally because that means if i translate that into 2020 then my two sons can't go to a church to worship God because they're of mixed ancestry. Now, I know that it's very different. We're talking about a different time, a different context. I understand all that. But I make the point that there were some of Nehemiah's firm convictions, his absolutely single-minded devotion and obsession with, that, that don't serve us as particularly constructive or positive in our faith today. We're not a church, as I said at the very beginning of this series, we're not a church who worries too much about building up its walls and its gates. We actually want our um, gates to be open and we are a church without walls. We in include and invite and welcome anyone, even if they're of mixed ancestry, anyone. We're an inclusive faith community, completely against what Nehemiah would have thought was right and appropriate for a faith community. We're a long way removed from Nehemiah in that respect. We've progressed. We've evolved into something far, far better. But we can see that Nehemiah was persistent. He was committed. But the important thing that I want to leave with you today that Nehemiah reminds us of is that he had that spirit of follow up. It would have been easy for Nehemiah to go back as he was required to do, to do, to go back to serve the king of Persia, Artaxerxes. He could have heard of what had happened in Jerusalem and Judah, and he could have thrown his hands up in the air and he could have said, well, God, I give up. I, I, I did what you asked me to do. I did what I knew what was right. I repaired the walls and gates. We led the people back to a point of a place where worship was again restored and life was good. And now they've gone and <clears throat> now they've gone and messed it all up again. Nehemiah could have thrown his hands in the air and said, I give up. I'm I'm not going back. They can they can deal with it themselves. I've done my job. But he didn't have that attitude. He went straight back. He followed up. He went back and he committed again to the task which he felt God had placed on his heart to do. And he went back in a whirlwind, really, and set about righting the wrongs of what had happened during his absence. He displays that spirit of follow up, that spirit of diligently making sure that the details are all done right and that they stay done right. He stayed the course. He didn't just walk away. 
and stay away. He stayed the course. He came back and ensured that things would continue to be as they should have been. Should have been. That spirit of follow-up is so important for us today. You know, we've been encouraged time and time again to continue to make contact, to touch base with our friends, our family in this time of restriction and lockdown. And, and, and I'm sure many of you have done that. And I hope and pray continuing to do that because it's that spirit of follow-up that we're reminded of from Nehemiah that's super important. But it's not just enough to go and make that contact once, to go and do that thing that you feel is right to do it once. But if it's needed, to continue to be there, to make that difference, to provide that influence, to show that love and care over and over. That spirit of follow-up is so crucial at this time more than ever. And as it speaks to COVID-19, that spirit of follow-up is also important that spirit of we do need to be cautiously optimistic in moving out of this stage four restriction. We shouldn't just go back and start opening up the house again to crazy numbers of people to, to um, even coming back too quickly into gathered worship. We really need to be wise about those decisions. We do need to be careful, cautiously optimistic. Nehemiah's last final twist in his story, his return, reminds us that we do need to continually come back and return our eyes and our gaze to the things that we've set our hearts on to make sure that they continue to be good, to be well. That's the encouragement I'll leave with you today, to continue to make sure that you are following up on all of the people who you're reaching out to, caring for, leaving that message with, making that phone call to, not just once, but continually follow up, make sure are they okay, make sure that they're doing all right, that in your absence in their life, that they haven't just gone back to something that's not good. Keep up that follow-up work. Be committed and intentional about that. Nehemiah reminds us that that follow-up spirit is just as important as the initial things that encourage us and inspire us to, to get things done. To keep pursuing and reviewing and following up people is so crucial at this time. Please do that. Please keep making those calls. Keep sending those messages. Keep letting people know that you're there and that you care and that you love them. Not just once, not just twice, but continually. That's Nehemiah's final message to us from his book and from this series that we've been journeying with him. And I pray for all of us that we would continue to be super diligent and intentional about ensuring that all of the things around us that we love and care for in this time of challenge, that we would keep our eye upon each of them continually. And that even if we turn away for a moment, that we'll turn our eyes back quickly and go back and make sure that things are good, that people are okay. May God help us all to do that in these days and the days ahead. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for the reminder that Nehemiah shows us that it's not enough just to go in and, and make a call, make something happen, do something just once and then leave it and it's done. But rather, Lord, that he reminds us that there is a place, there is a necessity for the follow-up. Lord, give us that same spirit of following up all of those areas of our life that need it, of reviewing the areas of our life that need it, but also to continue, Lord, to touch base with again and follow up all the people around us who just need to know that they're cared for and loved at this time. Lord, help us to do that. Continually remind us of the absolute need 
for us to continue to follow up people in and around our lives. We thank you for Nehemiah. We thank you for his message through the book in your word. We thank you that it speaks to us, even at a time like this. Lord, give us that same spirit of perseverance, commitment, and follow-up that Nehemiah had with his people of Judah. Lord, give us that same spirit in the days ahead. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I invite Fung to come and bring the benediction, prayer and blessing for us today. Thank you. A prayer for benediction today. May the love of God the Father and amazing grace of Jesus Christ and the fellowship of Holy Spirit be with you this week, help you keep focus on God, have faith in God, and never give up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you for joining us again today. We hope that uh, you'll enjoy seeing lower numbers again today in the news. We all hope and pray for that. But may God be with you this week. And we will see you again next Sunday here in the same place. For those in our small group, the invitation's open to come Thursday night, 7 p.m. here in the Sunshine Salvos Facebook group. We hope to see you there. Have a great week. Be blessed. Stay safe, people. Bye for now. Bye.